Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from Ruth, chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a fathom in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons, Malan and Kilion. They were Fedites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. This took Moabite wives, the name of the one Oprah, and the name of the other Ruth. When they had lived there for about 10 years, both Molan and Kilian also died. So that woman was left without two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab. For she had heard in, in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept out loud. 
They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept out loud again. Opar kissed her mother-in-law, but, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the psalm this morning is Psalm 146. We will read responsively at the half verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. No praise as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in, in rulers, nor in any child of earth. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. And food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. Sustains the orphan and widow. Frustrates the widow. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Paul's letters to the Hebrews. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for, once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of the goats and the bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of the heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience when the dead works to worship the living God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and that no one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Today we will talk about two words or concepts. We'll talk about agape, which is a Greek word. We'll also talk about hesed, which is a Hebrew word. Both describe love. Agape is unconditional love. It means that no matter what we do, we are still loved. It is a transcendent love, more potent than eros, which is erotic love, or philia, which is brotherly love. It is such a strong love that we don't have English words to totally express it. It's the love God has for us, and it is a gracious love that extends beyond what we deserve based on our own merits. Agape is what led Jesus to die for us. We respond to this love with agape toward God, or at least the goal is that we love God in this way, with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. Of course, no matter how hard we try, we can't love God as profoundly or as thoroughly as God loves us. Yet, we're called to try. We're also commanded to love our neighbors. We can't love our neighbors in precisely the same way we love God or else our neighbors would become our idols. However, in response to God's love for us, we're to love our neighbors unconditionally, no matter what they do to us. Because of God's agape toward us, we're called to make sacrifices on behalf of our neighbors. Now let's talk about hesed. Hesed is also difficult to fully grasp and to translate into English. It's also an attribute of God. It refers to the unfailing love of God that led to God making a covenant with God's people. It refers to a love that leads to loyalty. In the Hebrew Bible, sometimes this word is translated as steadfastness, loving kindness, or mercy. It's a love that goes beyond what is expected. Our Christian understanding of agape builds upon the foundational Hebrew concept of chesed, 
Yes, it always involves a tangible action. Because of the hesed of God, we are called to display hesed with our neighbors. An example is Ruth's devotion to her mother-in-law, Naomi. As a widow without sons, Naomi is very vulnerable in that culture. Ruth would be well within her rights to remain in Moab. Yet Ruth displays chesed by sacrificing to accompany Naomi to a land where she is going to be considered a foreigner. Let's think about other examples of chesed or of agape for our neighbors. Who here is familiar with the movie Forrest Gump? I hope most everybody is, yeah. Well, although the title character has a lower than average IQ, he has great capacity for loyalty and unconditional love. Despite the bad things that Jenny does, Forrest still loves her and cares for her as she lies dying. Despite everything Lieutenant Dan does to discourage him, Forrest still shows his loyalty and love for Lieutenant Dan. Forrest Gump's mother loves him unconditionally, even though he sometimes does embarrassing things. In fulfilling Jesus' commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves, and in response to God's love for us, we can practice these types of love too. One example is we make a covenant when we marry to love, honor, and cherish. Throughout our marriages, our spouses have times of prosperity and times of difficulties. Sometimes they'll be really nice to us and other times they'll be in a bad mood. We will love them unconditionally and will be loyal to them no matter what. They may relocate for a job, and if we display chesed, we'll go with them, even if it's inconvenient for us. We may also need to give up something else we like to support them, and we do it out of love. Here's another example. We have a friend whom we love. However, lately, our friend has ignored us and said and done hurtful things to us. If we love our friends as we're called to, we still love them no matter what they say or do. If they need help, we give help, even if they're still acting mean to us. When they're ready to seek our forgiveness, we forgive them. In fact, we forgive them even if they never ask for it. When we love our neighbors in this way, we build a stronger relationship with them. We also create a stronger relationship with God. God is present in our faithful, loving, loyal relationships with our neighbors. Through the care we extend to others, we encounter the gifts of God and the grace of God. Love. God is love. As disciples of God, we are called to love. We are called to love unconditionally. We are called to love faithfully and loyally. Love is the answer. Love wins. Amen.
Please rise and join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the King, the Father, and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Sean, our priest Randy, our deacon Martha, and our deanery prayer partner, St. John's Youngstown. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the town of Newfane, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, especially Jason Bach, Joe Brezka Sr., Cheryl Chesty, Rich Eggert, Kimberly Faulkner, Scott Fenske, Gilbert and Karen Garcia, Peggy Heiss, Jeffrey Kelly, Pat Marthia, Roger Matias, Rosemary Miller, Margaret Moran, Eric Oswald, Pam Reeb, Jessica Sherry, Sandy Smith, Norma Sturgis, John Ross Wilson, Armand, Bill, Dean, Donna, Ellen, Ivan, Jamie, Michelle, Nancy, Nick, Pam, Shirley, and any that you now name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are serving in the military, especially Garrett Adelizio, Vincent Adelizio, Matthew Chesty, James Clark, Joseph DePew, Hannah Federico Lombardi, Ryan Haas, Ethan Knott, Ryan Lanahan, Peg Magret, Jeremy Martin, Bryce Smith, and Mark Vogt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, especially Norma Lamaccia, Richard Rowland, Virginia Rowland, Betty Stein, and any that you now name. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Andrew and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. For what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, <clears throat> not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that they may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. In a few minutes, we're going to have a little parade of children in costumes, so when they come, we'll enjoy that. Um, but until then, we'll start with announcements. Who has announcements? Okay. Good morning. I just have a quick announcement. Um, wrapping up the St. Andrew's Stewardship Campaign and just reminding people to um, please re return their pledges. You can do that in person. You can drop it off at the church office, or you can also submit a Google form. So, and that will help us planning as we go forward in the coming year. So, thank you and happy Halloween. It comes an old rocker, I think. Good morning, St. Andrews and St. John's. I thought it'd be easy to do Ozzy today because sooner or later, every aging rocker looks like Ozzy. But I don't want to talk about aging rockers. I want to talk uh, about our church. Um, do you folks know who the most important people in our church are? It's us. It's you. It's me. It's all of us. Um, so I just want to say how grateful I are. We are entering, starting November, the season of gratitude. I'm grateful for the church family that we've had together for such a long time. That's right. We worship together, we have fun together. I'm grateful that we could survive this terrible pandemic. We could stand in our choirs back full bore, our Sunday schools back. And hey, if I w if when I was a kid, if we had Sunday school teachers one like we had here, I would have paid attention more. So I just want to say how uh, grateful I am for all the things we do. We have got a lot going here at our church. And so um, <clears throat> it is a season of gratitude. It is a season of stewardship as well. And as your senior warden and now your treasurer, I want to say, find something to help out with. Uh, you know, get in one of our activities, serve. A lot of you are serving, know that you have hand. Find something here that you can do. Um, also, uh, we can't do this for free, so please get your pledges in and as soon as you can so we could start planning for next year. Um, let's keep this ride going. Thank you and God bless you all. God bless you. And here we have the parade of costumes and kitties.
just want to say happy Halloween. Yay. And you, you guys can walk up and go with your parents. Good job. Everybody um, looks great. Oops, you're stepping on her dress. There the train okay. is being stepped Yay. on. <laughs> I do have um, tickets with me if you ask me to hold some gift card raffle tickets. And I still have gift card raffle tickets available at the cost of $20. But I think we've sold in the 80s. So I think we've got at least 85 sold. So that's wonderful. And um, now we just have to have chances to win. Starts yes. tomorrow night. Drawing start tomorrow night. Okay. Sure. Okay, yep, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. I um I just wanted to share an update on my brothers in laws. Hold um, the mic up to your mouth so they can hear it. Like a rocker? <laughs> yeah. Um my brother-in-law, Scott Fenske, has been in the hospital for over 200 days. Um, he is scheduled to go to Cleveland Clinic for a lung transplant. So I would like to ask all of you for special prayers for my brother-in-law, Scott Fenske, when he um, goes on this journey and hopefully he comes out okay. My brother-in-law, Eric Oswald, that we all pray for, he has a brain tumor on the left side. Um, the doctors are, he's had his, I think this is a second MRI scan and it came up positive. And so they're not saying remission. They're saying it's, a, it's good, it's progressing well, and the tumor is shrinking. So, and thank you for the prayers for him. That's all I wanted to say, and thank you. Thank you, Susan. St. John's has election day chicken and biscuits on Tuesday starting at 4 p.m. Get there early so you be sure and get some. And remember that you set your clocks back one hour Saturday night for the end of daylight savings time. So remember that next week. And next Sunday, we will celebrate All Saints Sundays. So if you have names you want read, please get them to the office by tomorrow. Yes, ma'am, Liz. We're dining in also. No, take out only. Take out only. Take out only. They say take out only. All right, Priscilla's gonna talk. She's gonna tell you the real the real poop instead of what I'm telling you, which is lies. <laughs> So the chicken, the chicken and biscuits, we start serving at 4 o'clock. It is takeout only. Um, and you can call the church and reserve dinners at a set time. We will serve till they are gone. And it includes your chicken and, your chicken and gravy, mashed potatoes, biscuit, cranberry, gelatin, squash, pumpkin pie. So all for eleven dollars so hope to see you there okay anybody else have any announcements what about birthdays who has birthdays or anniversaries let me look sometimes people you know try to forget their birthdays. um dorothy are you and gary on zoom yes we are all right well happy anniversary dorothy and gary let's sing to them Anniversary. Congratulations, and we ask that God continue to bless you in your, in your union and to give you many more years of, of marital bliss. Amen. Thank you. Love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you ever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him, made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for a pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the prayer. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>